Okay, we made it to Miami, no problems. Now I will tell you this. I had another load in here. It was only like 850 pounds or whatever it was. And I didn't even feel it back here. This, I felt the weight back here, man. I had to keep it under 90. The thing was fucking squatting a little bit, you know? All right, I might have to take the hitch off. You got it, come on in, come on in, hold it. There you go. We got loose pipes. Oh, yeah, my tire, you're good. Oh, look at all them pipes. Now slid forward. Hey man, let me get my strap. Woo, look at all that copper. Great. Dang, I knew that felt heavy in the back of my truck. Check this thing out. Double spring loaded. Holy deal. This guy hooked me up. I pulled it out of the dumpster. He asked, uh, I asked him if I could buy it for him. He just gave it to me. So we got two pulleys and a third one. Two of them are on springs. Oh man, this thing is sweet. I got an idea for this. So today on Project Shop, we are back on these giant pipes. We're gonna knock out the rest of them. I got the table set back up. A couple little modifications from the last time. Um, I put this roller on a vice sitting on the floor to kind of lower it down, make it more even. Um, you know kind of pulled away from the table a little bit um, I'm going to continue with the same process that I was doing before uh, only because it seemed like it worked Now I did read all the comments and um, I appreciate all the suggestions um, everybody that suggested a chemical way I'm not going to do it with chemicals it's just I mean how much chemical would I need to do that many pipes I don't have time to let it soak this process seems to get it done pretty quick um, everybody that suggested I use a table saw or some type of skill saw or whatnot we actually cut down the top of these uh, made a bunch of cuts down the top the problem was when we went to break it off or pull it out it was still stuck to the pipe and it was a lot more work when you cut down it with the saw like this, you're removing so much material in one shot. Um, it just, in my opinion, seems to work pretty good. If I could have set this up in a band saw um, somehow and cut it, I think that would have been the ultimate way to go. Okay, so right off the bat, immediately, these blades are better. These Torch, um, 18 teeth per inch. These seem to grab too much and gum up. Like, it seems like it gums up big pieces in there. And you just don't want to cut, you know? Uh, so I got them both running the Torch. This one seems like it has faster RPMs than this one because uh, it's it's cutting through it like good but I don't want to overheat it this one's still doing incredible but you can see right here was real thick that's solid I could feel when I hit those solid spots when I hit these kind of open spots you know you can really see it in there see that 
So it really makes the blade on that back side, that blade is just hovering. And what I try to do is, if it's coming up, I'll try to um, not cut on this side, basically push the blade like this. Here, let me show you. I'm basically trying to push the blade and twist it down, but not cut on this backside. Leave it right there and just kind of twist it to get it back down. It works a little bit, but you're flexing that blade. And I think that's how I keep breaking these blades. It's not that I'm pushing so hard this way because I'm pretty much letting the machine do the work. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to push too hard, um, but it's the constant me trying to correct for that, um, you know, that waviness. And, you know, there's a lot of foam on here. Um, you know, and everybody that says use a chemical, like how long would a chemical take? Um, you know, I got a spray bottle around here somewhere. There's some paint thinner. Yeah, that's kind of removing the glue. Yeah, it's actually removing it, but you're still, you're going to have to still come back. It's actually doing a pretty good job. But how, I'm going to have to, I'd have to like make a bath for these, you know, cut them smaller, make a bath, put them in there, and then come back and wipe this stuff off. This thing's doing the same thing with no chemical. And as you can see, it's having no problem getting that glue off. You know, there was a couple comments where people say I'm losing copper. I don't see any copper coming off of that. More copper's coming off of when I do this. You can see where I scrape down. But I can feel when I start doing that and then I come back up. Very minimum coming off from there. I'm actually sweeping it up. This is where I'm losing the most of it. And I've been sweeping this up. I got a bucket right here where I've been sweeping that stuff up with the copper. See all that? See that? And what I'm going to do is once I set, set up the water sluice for the uh, granulator, I'm just going to run this stuff through that and recover my copper. So I think the process I got is going pretty good. It's something anybody can do. Get a saw. Most people have a sawzall and a grinder. Just got to wear long sleeves and a respirator. Um, let's see how this is doing. Yeah, maybe a different, like people were saying, nail polish remover, or gasoline, or whatnot. Um, yeah, I could see it cleaning it and, and dissolving the glue, uh, but I, I'd say you're wasting your time. This is this is the way to do it on a budget, I think. Okay, so we're back at it. It's another day. This is what we did in about two and a half hours. There's actually a lot of little pipes in there. Um, it, you know, you can't really, it doesn't really look like there's much going on, but you know, there's a lot of work getting them. Sawzalls are working good. This one here, um, I think it's moving faster. It's got more RPMs or whatnot. This thing is killing it. Uh, this wasn't cheap but I'm glad I bought it, <laughs> you know? So it's working good, swapping back and forth and doing most of the cuts with this just because this one's easier. 
I let that cool down for a little bit in the last couple little cups. Um, I wish I could figure a better way of securing this, but the only problem is you gotta have it free to run down with salt. You know, you can't be clamping it because then, then you got an obstruction. Um, so I'm trying to minimize what I got going on here. Okay, it's actually uh, the next day. We got a little bit left. We had to cut off and uh, I was gonna come back and finish it, but anyway, um, got some up on the table ready to go. I got, um, I got help coming back. I don't know if one or two people are showing up. It'd be nice if two people show up. I got a whole pallet of lights and a whole trailer of lights. And we are recovering most of the copper that's on the floor. We're sweeping everything up in a pile. We're picking up all the big stuff. That's what all them bags are. And then I'm taking the broom and kind of pushing it around and using the blower to blow off. And we got a bucket right here. This is all the stuff with copper in it from the floor. See that? So pretty, you know, decent amount. Most of it's coming from right here, you know, right down there bunch we're collecting it right here on the table okay i know it's probably kind of noisy but i got him cutting them he's gonna be cleaning them he's gonna come over here and cut them up once he's done cleaning so this guy's job he's you know because he's actually probably almost taking longer than me to than i'm just touching so we want to keep that guy moving the whole time give him just one thing to do and delegate this guy to do that cut that and probably clean up the floor if he's quick enough cam action here to show you exactly what's going on now these little pipes i think i'm down to my last three pipes so we're cranking through it at this point uh, very important that we cut these in half pretty even for the 10 foot otherwise it's too short doesn't you know it moves around um, and then these little pipes this saw here is a little bit smoother i guess it's running faster so it gives less vibration 
And this is how I'm dealing with when I do get down into the middle here. Doesn't matter what you do, this thing's just wiggling all over the place, absorbing a lot of the energy from here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just pushing the saw back and forth like this, right? And what that's doing is it's not letting it grab so much and being able to violently shake it like this. When you're pushing like this, you're doing a couple things. Um, the pipe's not going to want to shake in this direction. It'll still shake this way a little bit, but you're kind of pulling in this direction. And then when you go back like this, you're pulling in that direction. And it's not so much this going on. And you're only pushing one side at a time, you know. Um, you hit different pockets. Like, I mean, you hit, you can see this stuff is not consistent. So you'll get real dense spots. It'll want to deflect the blade. There's really not much you can do with the blade deflection, but uh, just try to avoid it. And no matter what I do, it always seems to rotate this way, that back side. Um, so I got to start like this because I know by the time I get down there, I'm either going to be even or down like this. If you start here like this, you're going to be running down into the table down there. to get the dust off it because I kind of pick it up over my head one hand into the barrel that's working out a lot that's working out a lot uh, better than just throwing it on the floor plus we're bundling it up um, so we're getting a better process but we're running out of pipes the big ones I got one more over there and that's it finally these ones here uh, these ones get the best curve Okay. I know what to do about it. 
nothing I can do about that curve. I'm just glad that it always curves this way and not that way. that that's how you get the flexion man your blade hits that and it either goes down or up and there really ain't much you can do about it you can see that's super hard there it's crazy how you come across some of that stuff um but ultimately you want your blade like not you know 90 degrees because you're cutting less material but then you start walking when you start doing this you can kind of walk the blade out and keep it more consistently straight and just hover right above that copper. It's going pretty good. You can actually sit here with the saws on and clean this up pretty good. That's the way to do it.
four. But let me tell you something, it's a lot more dense, okay? It didn't have near as many little bites, so uh, I don't think it's gonna be over 2,000 pounds. I'm gonna say between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds. That's where I'm gonna, because uh, the first load was about 800 pounds, and uh, it wasn't much more than this, but it didn't have any of that little stuff in there. And then uh, we're already, got this pretty much broke down blasted out the whole shop with the leaf blower because there was dust on everything uh, we'll probably be finding dust in here for the next year from this job um, but we are pretty much set up we got these bailed up here this is all the ones from that last run and then uh, we're gonna start tearing in all these lights here now these lights are fiberglass and plastic with an aluminum lens some stainless clips two lamps a ballast and some number one insulated wire we're just gonna get them on the table do one row at a time and uh, try to knock them all out today and I got a whole nother pallet of them back there we should be able to knock them out pretty quick okay as you can see we're on the, some other lights now a lot of waste involved with these but I'm getting paid to actually take these lights um, this is what we got going on out here we drug all this shit outside and then uh, once we pull all this stuff we're just gonna keep stacking this in the in the shop I'm gonna have them keep bringing it in and we're just gonna start stacking it right back on here and then once we get all those on you know we'll uh, throw that shit right on top of here take it to the dump in one shot there's not much actual scrap involved in this you get a, uh, a little plate here steel uh, aluminum reflector pretty heavy once you pile them together got some lamps you got to dispose of I'll show you how to do that uh, coming up soon how to properly dispose them and make some money while you're doing it but uh, there's a ballast involved and um, I'm, we're taking these little clips off so they stack better there is a piece of brass in there but it's not really worth me uh, you know messing with you might get a pound out of all of this and then how long is it going to take you to recover that out of there
these things here aren't worth much at all. But they gotta be taken apart. And the only reason I'm taking these clips off is so they stack. Otherwise, I wouldn't even waste my time. And we got an overflow barrel here. These are electronic ballasts. You separate those from these. These are magnetic ballasts. They're way heavier and they're worth a lot more money. Well, not a lot more, but you might get five more cents a pound for those if you separate them out. And uh, these are going really quick. These are stainless. Old bucket there. Yeah, it sucks. You got to do this. Way. And you got to look at that brass insert. That's too too tedious to try to get out. I mean, you could. Someone was suggesting cut it with a bandsaw, but I'm not wasting my time with that a little bit. Sometimes it's better to be violent with these things. And these clippers here are the way to go. Spring-loaded, so you're not trying to force them back. And you can get in there and uh, cut them a lot, a lot quicker and more at, at one time. Always one that wants to mess with you. aluminum going. I'm actually saving these. I'm going to run a bunch of these through the granulator. See if it's worth it. See what we recover. I hate doing that, but what we're doing. seen it. using the actual thing as a lever and just peeling it right out of there so I don't have to hit that other screw. And these are just, just so I can stack them on my trailer. Otherwise, they wouldn't stack so nice. Nice stack of stainless.
I'm making sure to get those ends off so I get number one copper for that. Me some walls back there. All right. through that pretty quick a whole pallet and a whole trailer um, pretty much in uh, three hours so we got it all stacked back up on here and uh, we got all the steel here and all the plastic here we'll get this filled in and get all that plastic there up on top of here and get this strap back down and uh, ready to go to uh, the dump in the scrapyard and get rid of this shit. Bring in this stuff here. I'll go through this here in a little bit once these guys leave. But we're gonna do a little clean up real quick and uh, move on to the next project. Been an eventful day. Got a stack of aluminum. A whole barrel over here. Pretty thick. This whole stack here. Looking good. Probably all the, uh, oh, we got this here. Whole big old bag of number one insulate. Let me see. Oh. So that'll pay for part of the uh, labor. Got a whole bucket of stainless. Add to that bucket of stainless. Whole big old flower pot full of ballast. Not worth much there, but hey. We recovered it. We'll pay to get rid of that uh, plastic and uh, fiberglass and get paid on this. And then uh, I think I billed the guy $1,500 to go get this shit. It was two trailer loads. Went down there with the labor, picked it up, brought it back. We pretty much knocked it out uh, in half a day. And then uh, pretty much another half a day on this. So uh, all in all, that was a pretty good deal. Okay, it is payday. We are going to take all the scrap that's processed and get it out of here, mainly the copper pipes. So we got to dig these out. I'm going to cut these boards down, lower that a little bit so it's not so high. Um, and we got a little bit of stuff out here we'll be taking with. It's aluminum, some ballast, and I think that's it. Some of this aluminum, but first, we got to get all my giant round discs off the trailer 
and uh, I got these for free pulled them out of the dumpster except for that one right there I actually got that that top uh, uh, middle one um, from the scrap yard but I got a plan for these it's gonna be pretty cool uh, so what we're gonna do is just use this magnet pick them up put them on a pallet and get them off of here get the copper on here and get to Miami All right, it's a little chaotic down here at the scrap yard because they got half the road blocked off doing repairs, but we made it. Uh, got all the scrap down here. We got some uh, sheet aluminum, the number one copper pipes, some brass, some stainless, number two copper, some cast. We got some number one insulated from uh, all these ballasts, and uh, we got the ballast. I had to jack it up, couldn't get over the lip. With all that copper. between 1500 and 1800 pounds yes yeah, 62 with that bucket 60 pounds yeah great well that's the last of those copper bites <laughs> check out this old dinosaur man this thing is like a OSHA hazard this thing goes way down there turnings. I hope to be making some chips like that soon. That thing goes down there like 15 feet and then that thing comes up from the bottom. Pretty cool. Dag, look at all that copper. I got a backlog over here. There's my pipe from last time. <laughs> That one there was like 2200. Look at this thing, this thing's a beast. Hydraulic alligators here. This thing's sweet. I'm nosy, I like to check in all their boxes. See if there's anything I want. Some props. Oh man, look at all that wire. Copper King love to get a hold of that. Oh, snap. That's, that's me right there. That's me. That's me. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that big old chunk. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see what else we got in here. Some cut up eye beams. What a shame. All right, I better stop shopping. <laughs> yeah, I decided to go ahead and take all that stainless uh, round stock. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with the smaller stuff yet, but I like it. And, uh, we're definitely going to need that. Not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but it's on the pallet, so we might as well take it. Okay, so I kind of got a little excited. I probably shouldn't have bought all of that stainless, but I wanted it. Um, the shafts, got a great project for them. 
the smaller ones not sure what i'm gonna do with them yet but they figured they were on the pallet figured i might as well take them uh this stuff here this i'm super stoked about big old aluminum plate this one's even thicker ah, you know what that's gonna be that's gonna be to modify that second wire stripper wait to see what i got in store for that matter of fact some of that stainless right there is probably going to be part of it so we'll find out got to get that lathe up and running so i can start uh making custom pieces and uh i'll be making my own wire strippers here in a minute okay here we go this was the first ticket we had 861 pounds we got 390 a pound which was um a little bit more i think i quoted the high end at like 370 75 maybe um so i made out better on all three of these tickets actually uh, so the first ticket was three thousand three hundred and fifty seven dollars and ninety cents and um that didn't even recover the uh, amount that was paid for those pipes um so on the second ticket we were hustling okay we had two thousand two hundred nine pounds uh copper went down five cents um over the span of nine um five days um now you got to realize between this time i'm like moving uh into this shop so i really didn't even have time to do this i was doing it like half days quarter days just playing with it where, wherever i could uh meantime i'm moving stuff i got help um labor during the day helping me it was crazy i'm picking up scrap trying to process it trying to make videos and edit it uh, a lot going on in this in this month here um so we had eight thousand five hundred and four dollars on that one that's probably my top three tickets i've ever had um yeah and then here's the final one i had a bunch of other stuff uh going on with that one but we had uh six thousand or we had uh 1717 pounds so I was right when I said uh, between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds. I was right in there. It's a little on the higher end of that, but um, we got uh, 398. What did we do on that first one? 390. So we got the highest amount on that last ticket for uh, $3,833.66. We brought in a bunch of other stuff, number two copper, ballast, um, some stainless and then i bought 470 dollars worth of that um stainless rod and aluminum so that was a big chunk taken off that ticket that would have been um you know uh eight thousand basically another eight thousand dollar ticket right there so in total we had eighteen thousand six hundred and ninety six dollars and 21 cents worth of number one copper and i paid five thousand dollars for it um so that left me with uh thirteen thousand six hundred and ninety six dollars and then basically it took five days to do that all together so i figured it out two whole days was just me one whole day between two different days was me picking that stuff up i, I loaded that stuff and unloaded it myself except for the, the first trailer i loaded and then we stored um at the house and then i went back the next day loaded and then unloaded that trailer in the same day and uh moved them pipes into the corner and i had about 400 dollars worth of labor because we had like uh, four half days and like a quarter of a day where we spent like two or three hours you know or two hours on it um it was never i never once spent a full eight to ten hours on these pipes if i would have done that um i could have probably knocked a whole day off of this if not two days if i would have just spent two days strictly with the pipes i could have probably knocked it out in two days it, it, once you got going with the rhythm wasn't bad then i bought four hundred dollars worth of tools basically i think that i think it was four hundred because i bought a brand new sawzall which that big sawzall i think was almost 300 bucks i bought a warranty with it and then i bought a new angle grinder for like 89 90 bucks or whatever so let's say 400 bucks 100 dollars in blades i probably went through eight nine maybe even ten blades uh sawzall blades three wire three twenty dollar wire wheels um so that's sixty dollars and forty dollars worth of blades basically and then i'm gonna say three hundred dollars for uh food and fuel 
you know, going to get them, hauling that stuff around, selling it off. So uh, we're at twelve hundred dollars. So that left me with twelve thousand four hundred and ninety-six dollars and twenty-one cents. So over the five days, that came out to uh, uh, two thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars a day, basically uh, in profit. So hey, if you can get some of them copper pipes, man, it's well worth it. At twelve thousand dollars, got eight up uh, right away. It basically paid for the ten thousand dollars of moving to this shop and another probably two thousand dollars in labor and food and fuel moving all my stuff from two other three other places uh into here coming this far thanks for watching stay tuned we are absolutely overrun by scrap i can't even get in here i'm like wedged in the corner because we got scrap coming all the way out and there's some nuggets in here i'm telling you man we got some uh we got some shit going on. So uh, stay tuned. We've got a big old generator. We've got a stator for it, actually. So we already started processing some of the stuff. But, um, you know, got some transformers up on deck here, ready to go. We moved everything around today. I mounted the head back on the mill. Got the motor mounted on the head. First time that thing's been back on there and since I took it off two years ago. Uh, stay tuned. We're gonna be running some transformers. We got a big day. Got a whole look at that all the way to the door. Pallets and racks and and carts full of light fixtures. It's about every kind of light fixture you can think of. We got tons of copper wire to strip. Um, got barrels of it over here. Got that bin. Barrels of it down there. Uh, I think we got no choice. We got a lot of spaghetti. We're gonna bust out the granulator. Um, I have my buddy over here. We were talking about the water sluice. Um, got some great things coming up for that. Um, so definitely stay tuned and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed because it definitely helps push my videos and helps kind of fund this and I can really bring you some better content, you know. So stay tuned because we're going to have a scrap marathon over here. <laughs> so if you come as far, thanks for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys that watch these videos, all the subscribers. All the people that aren't subscribed that still watch the videos. All the people that comment on the comments. I, I see, I read every single comment that I see. If it comes up and I see it, I'll try to respond to it. Sometimes it takes me a while, but I'll get to it. You know, there's a lot going on in my life right now. Um, and, you know, every minute is like consumed with something, you know. And then there's always something else that happens. So I'm, I'm backlogged with minutes. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to a dude today about getting a bigger lathe and a CNC machine in here. Uh, I'm trying to go next level. I got so many cool ideas uh, I want to do and projects I want to build. So uh, stay tuned, man. We're going to go for a wild ride. Tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. Dancing, you ever seen a copper dance before? <laughs> 